This episode is brought to you by PentesterAcademy.com, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Be sure to check out our latest attack defense gadgets on HackerArsenal.com. Hey guys, it is day two of the Hardware.io conference and it is busier than ever. Let's go check out some of the awesome booths they have available. Hey everyone, I'm here with Jalal from Applied Risk, who is the founder and CEO of the company. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you for having me. So tell me about Applied Risk. What is it? Yeah, we are, we are a Dutch company that specializes in a cybersecurity of industrial environments, so which means that we are looking after the critical infrastructure, so water, chemical, oil and gas, and ensuring that uh, those environments are protected on behalf of our customers. Okay, and so I was looking at this cool device. I could not help but notice it. Walk me through this. Tell me exactly what it does. Yeah, so simply this is a kind of water um, simulation, water di distribution system, that's what we call it, which consists from two tanks, valves and sensors. And we've been using it for simulation purpose here within this conference, which means that uh, people can try to hack into it. And we had so far some good guys that have been able to manipulate the system and trip the whole process. And actually this is kind of simulation for um, live environment that we're having in some water distribution system from companies. So this is a way how we can um, uh, show the people that the, the risk is real. Mm -hmm. And also another way to um, raise awareness about how this environment can be protected because without water, then nobody can survive, of mm -hmm. course. Absolutely. And so I'm assuming this device also simulates flooding, correct? So the implications of that. How, could somebody really easily hack into a country system and dramatically change that? Yeah, absolutely. So in fact, there has been a number of incidents in the industry which uh, bad guys have been able to hack into water um, or wastewater um, companies and being able to manipulate set points and change values from those tanks and the process um, and also resulting in kind of um, um, damage, um, especially on the process side, so uh, floating waters and so forth. So yes, it's possible. Okay, and so do you guys work with uh, companies primarily? So we specialize, uh, we're helping um, end users, which are okay. companies, but also suppliers. So uh, components that are on the back side here, running this process are the type of customers or vendors, suppliers that we are helping. So yes, we are helping both sides and users, which are companies and product manufacturers as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks. I really appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. For you. Your time. Thanks. Hey, everyone. I am here at the Arm in Bed booth right now. And if you guys want to introduce yourselves and what you do for the company. Sure. Uh, I'm Bartek Szatkowski. I work in the Embed OS HAL team, uh, which makes sure that Embed works on uh, many devices at the same time and uh, works in the same way. Okay. And my name is Roman. I'm from Israeli office. I'm also um, Arm in Bed. OS developer working on Microvisor, a secure component of this OS. Hi, uh, I'm Robert. I uh, work on the uh, engineer. I work on the update service as a web engineer. Nice. Okay. And so, can you guys tell me a little bit about Arminbed and what you guys do? Uh, sure. So we're building a secure platform for connected devices and uh, updates. So it exists as a, a few building blocks. So we have an operating system, um, a secure connectivity solution, and uh, an update component. Okay. Awesome. And where where, do, where does Arm Embed get implemented? Where does it get? So it's uh, a bunch of uh, various devices. So we have partner boards. Mm -hmm. So from the likes of uh, NXP and Freescale and ST. Um, U-blocks, etc. And we also support um, customer boards. Mm -hmm. So we have a few lead partners and uh, we work with them to uh, implement our solution on their boards. Okay. And now you were saying to me earlier that Arm is the parent and Bed is a division company. Is yeah. that true? You might see it this way. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And uh, do you guys primarily work with uh, other companies or who, who do you work with normally? Uh, usually we work with partners boards. So when partners wants to implement Embed OS on their board, they come to us and uh, ask how to do it. Um, we provide them some documentation, mm -hmm. some guidance, uh, but usually they do it themselves. So there's sets of APIs that they implement. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
in theory, uh, everything works fine after that. Okay, in theory, uh, yes, yes, okay. <laughs> um, of course, the, the solution that we present is, um, it has many layers, starting from the device and then going up uh, to application, uh, then layers communicating with the cloud, and then the cloud and all the services in the cloud. So um, all these layers about device should be the same for every partner. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing they need to do is to make sure that embed OS works into on the, on their device. Gotcha. Okay, so you essentially provide all the guidance and yes. give them the the push to be we yeah. provide the blocks and let them use them in a way that suits them the best. Awesome. Got it. Thank you guys so much for talking to me today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey guys, I'm sitting here with Dirk Zitterstein from Hacker One. Thank you so much for being with me today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, what do you do for Hacker One specifically? Uh, so I'm a software engineer. Uh, I build and develop the Hacker One platform. And uh, is this your guys' first time at a Hardware.io conference? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's our first time here. Uh, okay, how did you get involved with the conference in the first place? <laughs> so to be honest, my marketing department told me, oh, we need somebody to go to Hardware.io. I was like, sounds fun. Nice, yeah, no, that's the truth. And so tell me about HackerOne. What, what does the company do? So we are a bug bounty platform. So companies uh, come to us and say, we want to start offering bug bounties or want to start a vulnerability disclosure program. Mm -hmm. Uh, we manage that for them if they want to. Uh, we also allow them to run their own. Um, we manage their inbox, or they can manage their inbox. Uh, we pro provide a lot of tools specific to uh, resolution and communication with hackers. Uh, so basically, uh, for example, you get a triage state for your... It, like, it's like an, e an email inbox, okay. but specific to uh, vulnerabilities. So you get triage uh, states where you have verified that it's an issue, but you're not working on it yet. Uh, you resolve the issue, the hacker gets a nice bonus, and uh, th th that's why they do it. <laughs> okay, nice. And just for you know, the average viewer at home, can you explain what is a bug bounty exactly? Sure, yeah. So what our hackers do is they uh, look at our, the companies on our website, uh, they see if they can find vulnerabilities, so issues that would lead to a compromise of business data or of availability of the website, and they will report that to the company and the company will reward them for their time uh, with a bug bounty, a bounty for the bug they reported. Okay, and so you guys, um, I'm guessing you do this for a lot of major companies, or you know, what's the, uh, you know, the average normally? Yeah, we got about 800 companies running a bug bounty on our platform, or a vulnerability policy. Um, so lar large names include uh, Twitter, uh, Uber, Yahoo, like all the, all the, the big tech companies That's are incredible. on there. Yeah, it's, it's really great, great to be a part of that. There's a lot of small tech forward companies as well. Uh, what you often see are, for example, Bitcoin exchanges who are really into security for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> some weird reason. Yeah, and they're, they're really involved with their technology as well. So they're up to speed with uh, modern standards for security as well. So they really want to have an open platform where everybody can submit what they found. And just, you know, out of curiosity, you know, given your years, you know, of experience and working with, you know, HackerOne, what, what, have, what do you view as maybe one of the biggest growing cyber threats, you know, uh, within the community? Uh, so recently we had a bout of ransomware attacks. Yeah. Um, most of those uh, are caused by stockpiling zero days. Like, people who collect zero days will not report them to a company. They will start growing in, in scale. Uh, they get chained into very severe issues. Uh, so the recent bout of ransomware was actually caused by a leak of a couple of zero days that were being hoarded, which if one of them was had been reported via a bug bounty program, the entire chain would have been broken and a lot of it wouldn't have happened. No. Do you see that pretty often then? Is that the case usually? Yeah, the, usually the vulnerabilities are not that severe, except that it gives you access to a lot of stuff you shouldn't be getting access to, which allows you to do a lot of nasty stuff. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hi, I am here at the NEO booth right now. If you guys would like to introduce yourselves. Hi, uh, my name is Ferdi. I'm a product security engineer at NEO, and we try to make electric cars more secure. And hello, my name is Javier. I'm also a product security engineer at NEO. And yeah, we are the guys who try to make sure that the cars are as secure as they can be. 
So tell me a little bit about, like, more about Neo. Like, where do you guys, you know, implement this and everything? So Neo is an electric vehicle startup. Um, we okay. we already took part in Formula E since 2014, and we built a supercar called the EP9, which is, which, yeah, broke the record for some tracks as an electric vehicle, and we're really proud of that. So as product security engineers, of course, we need to ensure that our products are as secure as can be. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's what we do. Nice, okay. And uh, how long ago was the company created? Uh, well, the company has been already around for a few years, but it decided to actually become a major car manufacturer around three or four years ago. Okay. And do you guys do this for uh, all over the world? Do you, you know, showcase this everywhere or? Mm, we showcase cars at conventions, okay. you know, and of course the Formula E team mm -hmm. also does their job, but um, for us as security people, we try to come here as, to a conference to show that we care about security, mm -hmm. to try to hire people, and just to keep in touch with the community. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what are your thoughts, uh, just out of curiosity, since I know the world is moving towards self-driving and, you know, all electric models, I'm just curious to see how NEO is kind of, you know, implemented into this at all. Uh, well, yeah, obviously we are aware of uh, the risks of self-driving uh, cars and that's why we are trying our best to make sure that they keep up to the requirements uh, security was. So we use like innovat innovative techniques in order to test the products. We try to help through the whole life cycle of the vehicle to improve and... Well, like we say, we try to be the best, so security and product-wise. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for sitting down with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. This episode was brought to you by Pen Tester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets 